I will not, I will not let you go. I will not fail you in any way. I will not give you up. I will not leave you without support. And then he says, I will not, I will not, I will not leave you helpless or forsake you or let you down. That's God's promise to you. And that's what gets us to the other side. That's what frees us from fear. He's never going to fail you. He's never going to let you down. He, uh, people will let us down. People will fail. We'll fail ourselves. We'll let ourselves down. But he will never let you down. He will never forsake you. I will not, I will not, I will not in any way leave you helpless or forsake you. That is God's promise to you. You can put your name in there. It is sealed in his blood. It is settled forever. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with God's character. It has nothing to do with ours. And that's what causes us to find peace. This is why we can be still when all the enemies around us and everything's going on in our lives and the world is, is crumbling and people are just don't know what to do. They don't know which end is up. And there's so much opposition in this world. There's division in this world. There's fear and anxiety and worry like there's never been before. And let me tell you something. We've got the precious secret of God's presence and his love. And we need to enjoy it and we need to take it to this world and share it with them because people are waiting for somebody to say, it's not about politics, it's not about nationalities, it's not about race, it's all about what Jesus has done for us. Good news brings great joy. Bad news brings fear. Good news brings joy. Bad news brings fear. Good news brings happiness. Bad news brings fear. You know, we, you know what we ought to fast from? We ought to fast from the news <laughs> because it's all always bad. They sell bad. They're selling bad. They're offering bad for sale. Bad news is for sale and bad news is all they build upon and bad news and fear. And look at what he says. Look at what Jesus said. I think I, I read I maybe I didn't read this verse to you in Luke 21 verse 25 in, in, in the last days there'll be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea of waves roaring men's hearts failing from fear men's hearts failing them because of fear because of fear and the expectation of things oh beloved listen we're all going to be expecting something today so we can either expect the bad things that are coming on this earth and that are happening to this world or we can expect the good things that God promised and said all good things are from heaven from our Heavenly Father and I'm telling you our expectation is either going to be on something good or something bad and if it's on something good we're going to have joy and if our expectations on something bad we're going to have fear and Jesus wants us freed from fear he came to deliver us fear is the opposite of love he came because love expects love love gives and therefore the recipients of love are expecting if you knew somebody loved you you'd always be expecting a call from them a note from them a gift from them if you know somebody loves you you're not afraid you're not afraid of losing you're not afraid of missing out because you know they love you well God loves you more than any human being could ever love you there's no room for fear where love is in first John 418 he says uh, perfect love casts out fear I like what the message translation says there I believe it says it banishes all fear it banishes fear fear you've been banished you've been banished from our kingdom you don't have a place here anymore so many people are living in fear and there's so much bad news in the world and the bad news is what gets reported. Our minds on that are training us. Our minds focused on bad news are, is training us to have bad expectations. That's why our mind needs to be on the good news of what God has done and what he's made available to us, because what happens is, is then we're training ourselves to expect good, expect good. In Mark chapter four, verse thirty five, Jesus says Jesus is love, right? God is love, right? Jesus says, let us go to the other side. And he gets in a boat with his disciples and the storm hits in verse thirty seven. The disciples got 
so nervous. He said, Lord, don't you care that we're perishing? You see, don't you care is proof that you don't believe the love that God has for you. Don't you care? This was revealing to them what they did not yet believe and they were not yet convinced of. And this is what we have to come to believe and be convinced of so that we are ready for any storm. Don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus, he didn't answer the question. He demonstrated his love. He got up and rebuked the wind. He should have been rebuking them. But he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Listen to what I'm about to say. This will give you the the equipment that you need to handle any storm and have peace in the midst of anything. There's something very powerful about being calm. When you know you're loved, you're calm. You don't you don't need attention. You don't need everybody to like you. You don't need everybody to, you know, care, you know, care about your feelings. You don't need to have everybody understand you. You know that the father loves you. And that becomes enough. It's only not enough when you don't realize that it is enough. So listen, what they needed was peace. Jesus gave peace when he said, peace, be still. But they needed it. And they could have had it before he said anything. You know why? Because they had all that they needed. And the fact that they didn't know they had all that they needed is why they were afraid. They were afraid because they didn't take inventory of what they already had. And what was it that they had? Here's what they had. They had three things. They had the promise of God. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side, they had a promise. He didn't say we might not make it, guys. Come on into the boat. He said, we're going to the other side. That's a promise. Let me tell you something. No matter what storm you are going to face tomorrow, you have a promise today for the storm that's coming tomorrow. You have a promise today for the storm that's coming. Number one, they had a promise. Number two, they had God's presence. He was in the boat with them. He was in the boat with them. And number three, they had the power. How many know that even in Proverbs, the Bible said death and life are in the power of the tongue. The one thing that they didn't have was peace. And the reason they didn't have peace was because they didn't focus on the three things they did have. What were those three things? The promise of God, the presence of God and the power of God. If you know you have those three things, you'll have the fourth thing, peace. So when a storm hits, you take inventory. Okay, I got the promise. I got the presence. I got the power. Therefore, I have peace. Now, when I speak to the storm, I'm speaking from a place of peace. Not from I I only have peace if if I can calm the storm. No, you have peace. So now when you say to the storm, peace, be still, there will be a great calm because there's already there's already a great calm inside of you. Jesus didn't say, oh, there's a storm. Oh, oh, no. Thanks for waking me up, guys. Peace, 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 be still. No. He already had the peace. So out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth spoke and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. You have these three things right now. The only reason you don't have peace is because you're not focused on the three things you do have, because the three things you do have will give you that peace. That's it. That's all I got for you. Is that enough? 
because, because you have everything you need now to handle any storm that comes.